More on developer support and paywall jumping. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc, the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Find out more at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this third and final part of a recent Mac Voices Live conversation continues as the panel discusses how we can support the Twitter client developers who were victimized by Twitter's change in policies and what Apple's role is in that support. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Well, yeah, the the way the the way that the payments go for the App Store, that's, you know, publicly, you know, those terms are public. I, to, to go back to, to Brett's comment about the paywall jumping, and I know we're all over the place here, but it's all sort of tied together. Uh, he's, when he said it's not a personal relationship, I think that's a really, really interesting point in that you're right. Uh, the, the, the developers in this case definitely have a personal relationship within the community. Now, it's been a, a quick little discussion in our private uh, uh, Zoom chat here. Um, you know, really... Apple has to stay involved because Apple has not disclosed, does not disclose who has purchased Twitterific or TweetBot or any other app. So there's really no way for the developers to appeal directly to those individuals and say, hey, so they almost have to go the route that's been going here and relying on the community to spread the word. You know, there's another aspect of where I was saying that Apple must have set up some, you know, done some work on their end is that you know the tap pots people are saying oh you can apply your balance to ivory so you can transfer it from one app to another well there's definitely never been any way that you could take a subscription from one app and say oh move it to a a different app that's just not something that apple's ever provided a way for somebody to do so apple had to have engineered the back end for that to happen because as you say you know apple has to do it because the developers can't do it they don't know who the customers are right okay so i know we we've, we've had a number of discussions where apple was beat up pretty badly by the way they treat they uh, treat developers is this the opposite should we be because i think this jim i think you you bring up some great points and frankly i think they've been overlooked that is, is this a situation where Apple really is helping support the developers who got treated grossly unfairly? Well, I, I don't know that there's so much overlooked as nobody's talking. So these are like points that Michael Sai brought up in his blog post. The, the Twitterific and Tapbot people have not mentioned this. Apple hasn't mentioned it. It's just looking at it. It's like, well, this must be happening, but it, nobody's. You know, presumably, maybe the, you know, maybe Apple told the Twitterific and and uh, Tapbots people, you absolutely cannot discuss this. You know, that we're doing this with anyone. You know, this is you know all NDA, and you can't you can't tell anyone because you know Michael Sai is very also very well known in the developer community, and his blog has huge readership. And I guarantee you, the people at Tapbots and Twitterific read this and you know i i bookmarked this post when it came out because i'm like i thought oh well interesting discussion is going to be you know in the comments of this post and i want to keep coming back to it and see you know what people say and i've been very disappointed nobody's saying anything um the fact that no one is saying anything uh tells me that your speculation that there's an nda in place is correct it's, there, there's no other reason why why Tapbots or Icon Factory would be quiet about this. Even if they were to hop in and say, "No, that's not how it played out. This is what's going on," or even just to say, "You've got it wrong," or "You've got it right." Um, yeah, there, there, there's a reason why they're not saying anything. And, I, and, and again, I, that goes back Apple to the all head. eggs in one basket, you know, all developers on, on under Apple, you know, you can't, you've got to be very careful because you don't want Apple mad at you or you're, 
you know, SOL. Well, and look, there, I, I'm going to go back to it. I mean, I think somebody, and maybe I'll be the only one that should give Apple a little pat on the back, NDA or not, um, because I'm not subject to the NDA because I don't know anything. So, right. I, I, to, but to Jim's point and his detective work or his deductions, maybe more accurately, um, you know, then this really does show that when push really does come to shove, um, and and if you want to call it favoritism, call it favoritism. But these were very these are very high profile developers in the community, and you we want to see them supported absolutely. And if you and look if. <laughs> If you can cancel your subscription and and you know let them keep a little bit of money, I'm all for it, no question about it. Um, but Apple deserves some 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 a little bit of credit here too for doing something that is right and at least in our in our view. So I think so. I, I, you know, sure. I mean, they 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 could have you know Apple could have promoted it. So you know, it's sort of like they 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 went a little ways. Um, you know, or, you know, presumably Apple could have just eaten it and said, you know, this is, you know, Elon's fault and we'll, you know, we'll eat it. Well, or uh, to, to put the hard bitten business guys hat on, you know, too, they could say, uh, you know, developers, we need the money back. And yeah, they could. They could. You know, I, I think it would be bad PR if our tap bots and Icon Factory went out of business. That that would that would not be a good look for Apple. Oh no, absolutely not. Yeah. And you know, because okay, they can't get blood out of a turnip if they go bankrupt. You know, they're it's out. Yeah. So it 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 is definitely fiscally more responsible to you know go through this process. And try to work something out, and let, and then let the public, or excuse me, let the yeah, let the public, let the community, you know, figure out a way to help support, keep the developers around, keep support keeping the developers around. Well, it's also bad optics if you let companies, two companies that, like you said, are high profile, that have both won Apple awards, to just go under because one of the apps that they make, which happens to be incredibly popular, ends up sucking them dry when they have to do refunds. That That's a bad look all the way around. Mm-hmm. Mark, you've been kind of quiet, although you were giving thumbs up a couple places. Do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I guess I, I agree with... Uh, Jim's speculation that uh, you know Apple had to engineer some sort of mechanism to allow backend transferring of uh, unpaid or unused subscription revenue to credit and forward balance to another app, you know, and good on them for that. Um, yeah, and, and I agree overall that I mean, if it's if we're talking about you know ten or twenty dollars, uh, you know, get pissed at Musk and Twitter, and then just. Uh, just forgive it. Let the uh, let the developer you keep their money. It's not worth trying to get, get that amount of money back for an app that someone's been using, presumably for a long time, quite happily. Brett in the chat room says, "Let me do this, Kelly." Brett yeah. in the chat room says, "If Apple incurs any costs because of this issue, they should take it out of their Twitter advertising budget." <laughs> I think they already did. <laughs> After today, I would really appreciate if there were no more Apple ads on Twitter at all, and they saved all that money and used it on literally anything else. If they went and took it out under the rainbow arch and lit it on fire, that would be a better use of that money than paying for ads on Twitter. I don't have a strong opinion about I, being I, on handicapped I, people at all. I don't understand that either. And I don't understand, you know, apparently Twitter is not paying AWS bills. And so a, a, Amazon is threatening to withhold advertising. I mean, uh, why, just, why, why doesn't don't pay, Amazon don't just pay. turn off AWS? That, you don't pay, that seems don't pay. like the right decision to me. Yeah. That's what they would do to pretty much anyone else. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I, I don't understand that. that I mean, that, it's like. We've seen stuff what? break because somebody didn't pay an AWS bill. Like, I've seen it more than one time. That you know, oh well, it turns out you know we got we got behind on on the AWS payments, and that's why the thing doesn't work that right. you rely on. 
you know, that's hey, not Kelly, new. it's even worse than that. It's not an AWS payment. It's, you know, it's $10 for updating, uh, you know, uh, a SSL certificate. And yeah, you know, it brings down the entire website until <laughs> there's... Well, I've seen that, but I've seen specifically... Going. Specifically, like, yeah, the last check we wrote to Amazon bounced. And so now we don't technically have an AWS bucket. And that's why this thing that so many people are relying on in the back end, you know is broken and the thing about it is that it never manifests that way like it's always you know i can't load this thing on the web page well it's because that was all powered by aws and you know somebody's wires got crossed and here we are so that kind of thing is the is you know is not new and that's the part of that that's been very interesting to watch you know yeah threatening to threatening to to withhold advertising as opposed to just up and deciding which is apparently the move of a bold businessman right i'm gonna go flip the switch and see what happens <laughs> everything I'm over run there away is, from home i'm gonna cross the street and camp out with the neighbors for the night <laughs> everything now over there is what in it david will I'm going to hurt David's feelings a little bit by bringing this up, but uh, everything over there seems to be powered by the screen test. This is the thing I want to do. I'm going to go do it, you know, turn off a thing, reboot a server, what, and I'm going to see who screens. David never does that. David, I think you muted too. Oh, no, it's just the thing. It is, it is known. Yeah, it's, it, it just hurts, David. <laughs> it hurts mm-hmm. David's feelings to have to bring work into it, but that's totally a thing. No, like, I talk about yeah. that all the time here. Yeah. This computer in the closet that no one's touched for 10 years. Yeah. What's it but do? It's on. Well, turn it off. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Turn it off and yeah. <laughs> Why the hell is it on the network for 10 years too? Exactly. Brian says... Uh, around and find out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian, <laughs> Brian in the chat room says, if Apple would help th- with this Twitter situation, would it set them up with a precedent uh, to help out other developers in the future in the same way? And and I put in the chat back, and I, I agree. I mean, I think this is why the presumed NDAs are in place, because they don't want to have any any serious establishment I, of a precedent. I think there is no such thing as precedent with Apple. Apple does what they want each time, and it doesn't matter what we did yesterday or, or, or any other time. What we're doing now is what we're doing. It's like um, they're a cat. Yeah. Well, Jim, or a I monopolist. What? What, Mark? Or a monopolist? I mean, they they're very big. You know, I hear all sorts of horror stories from developers about uh, apps that get approved that suddenly they get rejected for you know s- stupid reasons. You know, and uh, there's no recourse. So you know, I, I think they're just uh, you know they're an eight hundred they're a clumsy eight hundred pound gorilla. And, you know, let's not uh, give them more credit than they're due for, uh, you know, for everything that they do, uh, you know, because they do a lot of stuff very well. And they do a lot of stuff that really uh, is shocking. And coming back to this, um, I suppose to me that the reason they had to get involved is they don't share user identities with their app store vendors. So, uh, you know, like it or not, uh, their policies put them right in the middle of a uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, you know, fire, you know, firestorm. And uh, you know, they're acting to get out ahead of it a little bit. And I don't know, maybe there's a little bit of corporate animus against uh, Musk or Twitter. Uh, don't know how to handicap if that is uh, the case. But, um, you know, it is, um, it's an interesting situation. We'll have to see how it evolves. And the other question I'd ask is, um, you know, Jim, you make a very you know, interesting point about, you know, okay, all these companies, they could lose, you know, a good chunk of you know their annual revenue stream. But um, in aggregate, does anyone have any inclination of, you know, how many, how many clients are we talking about? Because uh, I know uh, some developers, they're top of their category. And, you know, you know, it's, uh, it's just beer money, you know, so are well, it these depends apps on your category, making, uh, right? Lots I mean, of money for their developers. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking for the facts. You know, I'm not casting negative aspersions, but uh, you know, this all may be you know, uh, like uh, my mom used to say, making a mountain out of a molehill. So, um, what's the scale involved? Well, Twitterific and Tapbots are not, you know, somebody in their bedroom. 
they're not Fortune 100 companies either. But, they are the, um, um, are the top two Twitter apps. You know, 50K, yeah. 100K, 500K. How much revenue are we talking about? You know, because uh, I, I, I think it's probably over a million a year. I would be comfortable estimating a seven digit number because, like Jeff said, they're the number one and number two Twitter apps. We know there are hundreds of millions of Twitter users. So, well, how, many, how many people on this panel used one of the two? Oh, yeah. I used, I used both. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you know, yeah. there you go. No, I, I actually never did because I saw this day coming because of what Twitter did like a decade ago with their party apps and how they continued yeah. hobbling them and stuff. And so, you know, I never got onto Twitter until 2018 and I purposely never started using an app because I was like, I'm just going to get used to it and they're going to yank it. And it took a lot, you know four years, which is longer than I expected, but eventually my my expectation was fulfilled. But so I, I just used the native Twitter ones. But I immediately bought Ivory because um, you know, there's nobody nobody to yank the rug out from under that. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find local doctors who take your insurance at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. You've been stewing about a health problem you have. You almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friends' opinions. You're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat. But you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better, faster, with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MacVoices and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Mac Voices. ZocDoc dot com slash Mac Voices. Thanks to ZocDoc for their support of Mac Voices. Well, Jim, I just want to make uh, you know, a, a, you know, a, a joke at uh, prior Twitter's expense. You know, the reason it took so long is everything Twitter does you know, t- takes so long. It's a very slow moving corporation. Not anymore. Not, you know, anymore. not anymore. There's nobody left. Yeah, yeah and that, from, from what from what I've heard, it, it seems like they actually were moving in a direction that was a bit more friendly to third party apps um, un, until Musk came. Um so they were slowly moving in the opposite direction. Well, it it does seem like every week, you know, you have to, if not more often, you have to see what what the story is. Um, but the the one thing that I know I I don't see Yvonne quite as evil as a lot of people on this panel do. But the one thing you can't argue with is the the outages and the things that are breaking. That those are those are objective facts. Have you seen so. the news today, Chuck? Yeah, well, that's what I mean, Kelly. That's exactly what I mean. You know that there there are ob- there are objective things wrong. I don't. I, I always get uncomfortable when we have discussions and make some presumptions because we are we can we only can see one side of the story because I feel like well, there. I wish somebody was was able to speak to the other side of the story. This has but, nothing to do with out talking how, how? about him hassling a former employee. Is what I'm talking about. Oh, that part. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Sorry. And, and Chuck, yeah. what would you say about any other, you know, large business CEO that, you know, didn't pay the rent for the headquarters and was not paying AWS bills and and other bills and and just basically saying sue me, um, that, you know, you, you honestly, you know, any other company if they started behaving that way, I think you would be pretty horrified. Well, I think you'd be horrified, but I'd still want to ask the question. 
you know, where's what's the cash flow situation? You know, what, why? I mean, th- that's the thing I want to know is why. Just, uh, just if you just if if you answer if your answer is just out of spite, then okay, then whatever is going to happen to you deserves to happen to you. But I just don't see Elon Musk with the successes he's had, unless he's just gone completely off the deep end. Did you see the story about the Super Bowl, Chuck? Yeah, well, yes, I did. Well, okay, look at PayPal. Yeah. They, they removed him as CEO because of the things he was trying to do and was doing in the company. They're like, yeah, you, you will destroy this company. You're out. He used the exact same phrase about Twitter that he used about PayPal when they when it turned out he was on his way out the door, which is the code is brittle and it needs a complete rewrite when I don't think that means what he thinks it means because code isn't brittle if you fired everybody that knows how it works. That's not that's not brittle code. That's bad business. Those are not the same thing. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that, Kelly. I think the code can be brittle, and you can you can still have the coders there that did it. So I I, I think that's apples and oranges. I really do. Well, I would I, say I, that I, if it I, weren't Chuck, for the fact that he has repeatedly proven that he doesn't that specifically the things that he is calling out are things that he absolutely does not understand. And I'm not saying that he has to understand everything, but he should leave those decisions to people who do. That's all I'm saying. That's what makes for a good business person is this is not my area of expertise. I'm going to go find someone who it is their area of expertise and I'm going to make it their problem to worry about. And that's a much better business decision than going on Twitter and going, I flipped a switch and now half of it's broken and oops, you know, like, no. I I, I agree with that characterization, Kelly, you know, that you don't have, if you're a CEO, you don't have to be good at everything. Right. You just need you, you need to hire good, good people to know how to do yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. And it's only because I've seen a number, a non-zero number of articles over the last two months or so, um, saying, here are the things that happened at PayPal before they bounced him. And here are, you know, eight of those same 10 things that he's now done at Twitter. Like, and you can line them up and you do not, it's not one of those magic eye things where you have to squint just so. Like it's very clear cut that this is a pattern. And that's the thing that is the thing that eroded a lot of my little faith, admittedly, in the fact that that was going to be a, continue to be a going concern. And now we've got bills not being paid. We've got government requests being ignored. We've got basic, you know, basic rent checks that are just not showing up. It's not like they bounce. They're just not coming in. And that's the kind of stuff that is bad decision making. I mean, if you can't get an HR person to tell you for more than a week whether or not you're even an employee anymore, like that feels like a problem. Oh, if you can find that article, I'd I'd love to put that in the show notes, the one that you say that things yeah. line up. I, I that that would be very interesting to see. Guys, we're pretty much out of time. Um this has been probably one of our best discussions in a long time. Thank you all for uh for participating and sharing your opinions. Um so, so God, they juggled the the room on me again. They always do. Everybody's all over the place now. So, hey, we'll we'll end up with where we started. Jim Ray, thank you for being here. Where can uh, folks find you? You ended up in David Ginsburg Corner of the Angels. Okay, I'm not in the same spot as far as I can tell. But <laughs> you raise his hand. That's why. I, yeah, I, you know, I was wondering if that. You know, I used the raise hand feature. I wondered if that moved me. Um. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think, you know, what we can all take away is from this discussion is yellow iPhone equals good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect, Jim. Perfect. Jim nailed it. We're done. Good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Where can folks find you, Jim? <laughs> you can find me at, uh, on the web at ProView.com, P-R-O-V-U-E. And uh, on Mastodon at ProViewGym at TechHub.Social. Great. Thanks so much. Eric Bolden, thank you so much for being here and for uh, sharing the podcast article that got us started tonight. That was a really good one. Uh, where can folks connect with you? Uh, I can be found at uh, EA Bolden at te- TechHub.Social. And I do have to say, 
on, on the, the phone. I, I think that there's going to be like a show that comes out that will have, you know, phone, phone colors and cases. And somehow there'll be like an undercover thing and, and you'll be able to tell, you know, how if there's an Apple logo, those are all, that's, that's the good people and the, the bad people all don't have phones. I, I think there's going to be a separate detective show and somehow they're going to incorporate cases and colors. And I'm just waiting. <laughs> but that's okay. clever. And, 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 and Eric wants to be the executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Jeff Gamut, I'm glad you were medicated sufficiently that you were able to, to be here with us. Uh, where can folks find you? I, You know, I'm glad I could be here, too. I was really missing getting to spend time with all of you. Um, okay, before I tell people where to find me, I'm going to do a mini PSA. If you want to help out uh, Icon Factory, remember, they make other apps, Linea Sketch and Tot. Are fracking awesome and I use them all the time. For tap bots, paste bot and ivory. And if you're if you're not on uh, on Mastodon, they make Calcbot. So there are some other apps that you can use from these companies and uh and help give them a little bit of money and get something valuable in return. Okay, now where to find me? Um uh on the socials, Jay Gamut. Uh, I'm mostly active on Mastodon and Instagram right now, and um, then for shows. Uh, when when I'm not stupid sick and Chuck lets me in, I, I'm here on Tuesdays, and then uh, and then on Thursdays there's the big show. And when I'm not stupid sick and Dave lets me in, then then I'll be there on in touch with iOS on Thursday evenings. Okay, then on Fridays, it's uh, it's the Mac show. And then also Brian Chaffin and I do the context machine. Um, I get around. Very nice. Very nice. And Jeff, thank you for the for the PSA. Those are great points. I, I'm a definitely a PaySpot user as well. So yeah, they they don't just make these one one particular apps. David Ginsburg, you're in the middle of the pack tonight. <laughs> Where can folks find you? Find me at In Touch with iOS at InTouchWithIOS.com. The YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash In Touch with iOS. <laughs> I am on Mastodon at the MG65 at Mastodon.cloud. Uh, you also find me on uh, the Mac show on Fridays on the British Tech Network. And uh, thanks. Thank you, as always. Webb Bixby, who is planning his Kansas City Chiefs podcast as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Where can folks find Tr you, Webb? Trust yeah. me, there are plenty of those, so I, I don't need to jump into that pool. So, well, uh, just, you, hey, Webb, just do what Elon did and buy one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, great idea. So, I don't even watch football anymore, Webb. But if you made that podcast, I would listen to it. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you because I ain't going to do it. So, um, <laughs> oh. you can find me at Web Bixby at Twitter, social guys. through Mastodon. Um, um, yeah, trust me, I got way too much. <laughs> I got way too many things to keep me occupied that I don't need to add a podcast to it right now. So, um, it was an interesting show tonight. Um, uh, I've uh, come out before. I don't want to say that I am an Elon Musk fan. Okay. Uh, I think he's done some really strange things, um, but I, I, I don't want to castigate him like some people do. I, I think that he, I, I still think, and I've said this before in the show and I'll say it again, I think there's a bigger master plan that he's trying to figure out his way through. He paid $44 billion. That is not throwaway money. Um, he, he's trying to think something through. He, he, and I know he's surrounded by a lot of smart people that are working with him. So anyway, so much for that. Chuck, thank you very much. Like I said, Web Bixby at twit.social on Mastodon. Thank you. Thanks so much, Web. And, and I'm, I'm like you, um, just what I was saying earlier. I feel like there's another side of the story we don't know yet. So I just continue to watch and wait. Mark Fuccio, um, with his politically comment, commenting background, where can folks find you? Oh, it's simple. Yeah, best way is through Elon Musk's Twitter at M A R K F U C C I O. Um, it's when it's working. working. 
you know, <laughs> as maybe as a backup. If you can. My name on LinkedIn or at Mark Fuccio at uh, so at uh, what it web what is it uh, social dot twiv or twiv dot social uh, twit dot social twit dot social this week in tech at twit dot social yeah, yeah. Mark Mark has uh, joined the Fediverse so um, check his, his kind lower of low. oh, there goes the neighborhood you- damn it. <laughs> Well, this panel has lots of respect for each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I, and I, I, just one last thing is, you know, I agree. You know, you know, keep your popcorn fresh and your adult beverage of choice. You know, wine, beer, or spirits, and uh, just watch uh, what happens at Twitter because um, we're maybe what five or six months into it, and uh, you know, as they say, the fat lady hasn't sung yet. So there's still a lot way, you know, a lot more. Drama and change, you know, good and bad, you know, t- to come. We'll just have to see what happens if it's good or if it's bad. Agreed. Last but not least, our our long lost wandering sheep has returned. <laughs> Yay! Kelly, it's great to have you back. We missed you. <laughs> Where are can you, folks find you? Are you just making jokes about me being fuzzy? Because like it's looking nice. <laughs> No, that that never crossed I, my mind, Kelly. I'm sure it didn't. No, I know it didn't because otherwise it would have been a Wookiee joke. I, anyway, <laughs> um, so I'll give everybody the important part. This is a lychee margarita from a place here in Portland called Nong's Kamangai, which makes chicken and it's amazing. And uh, they will also sell you a margarita and you can get all of it uh, as takeout. And so I have a margarita from them with lychee fruit in it, which is amazing. So um, there you go. That's the part everybody really cared about anyway. Uh, you can find me on Mastodon. I am currently verso at mastodon.social. Um, I am looking to migrate off that instance to something else. So um, when I get that updated, I will let you know. But if you go try to follow me there, it will just point you to the new place uh, wherever I end up, which is one of the magical things about the Fediverse. And um, unlike the rest of you, uh, I am in the camp that thinks uh, Elon decided that he would much rather pay $44 billion for Twitter to believe that people like him instead of just going to therapy. So there you go. Occasionally, you can find me on In Touch with iOS with David. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes here, making sure uh, Chuck isn't completely convinced he has a complete hold on everything that happens over on here. Over on Mac Wiz's live. And she does such a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> I do try. Hey, I definitely want to thank the chat room. They were uh, very active tonight, throwing in some good comments and having some discussions of their own. So, uh, of their own. so thank you guys very much for being here and for uh, for participating. Um, it's always fun. Folks, this is Mac Voices Live. We do this Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. You should join us, too, at youtube.com slash TV. Then you can throw your comments in and have be part of the show as well. We'll be back next week. We hope to see you then. As always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.